Well, hello once again. Uh, this is Code Rage 2019 from Embarcadero. Uh, this week we're focusing on some Delphi VCL things. Um, my name's Ian Barker, and I'm an Embarcadero MVP um, for Delphi. Uh, you can find out more about me and uh, how to get in contact with me and various things like that, and some source code um, at uh, about.me forward slash Ian Barker. Now, um, this week's focus is really on um, the VCL. Now, um, old programmers or older programmers or more experienced programmers who are used to using Delphi will know that um, the VCL is the original um, control library that was available, the visual control library. And uh, nowadays, of course, a lot of us are talking about things like FireMonkey, um, our FMX, um, which uses a slightly different way of rendering the controls. In fact, they're all rendered by um, graphics. Um, the VCL is much closer to the metal in some ways, to use a phrase, in that um, it uh, it quite often uses APIs and existing Windows controls to render. Um, that's a good thing um, because it's a lot faster in some cases, although uh, FireMonkey is getting very, very fast nowadays, um, and the behavior is uh, predictable. Um, but also sometimes that can be a bit of a problem because you're relying on um, parts of Windows to render some of the controls. And plus, over the years, there's been a very rich library of um, VCL components that are available. And um, not all of them adhere to Windows standards. Some of them are slightly out of date. Um, it just depends on, on uh, your preference. Nowadays, if uh, someone asks me to write a new application, I tend to use FireMonkey. Um, the reason I choose FireMonkey to use for new applications is that uh, it's cross-platform. So with that cross-platform, you're able to target things like Mac um, OS. And nowadays, um, with the enterprise and upwards versions of Delphi and Rad Studio, you can also target Linux, um, which is a big plus. And of course, if you're using FireMonkey and you've got the right kind of um, code structure, you can um, target iOS and Android as well. Um, but VCL is very much still around. Um, it's not been uh, deprecated or, or abandoned. And in fact, um, this last release or most recent release of uh, Delphi, which is Delphi Rio, and in fact 10.3.2 and imminently 10.3.3, there's a public beta out now, um, has got an awful lot of additional things done to the VCL. Um, but if you've been a programmer for a long time, then you probably know the VCL. That doesn't mean to say the VCL is old-fashioned. There was moves forwards and um, lots of extra things are added and features and stuff like that. Um, there's some uh, properties now that allow you to say um, to the operating system, you render this control, not uh, the VCL uh, paint and drawing and things like that. Um, we've got a very short um, series of videos this week. Um, our guidelines as MVPs and uh, video creators have been around about five to ten minutes. And I've already been talking for about three or four minutes. Um, and I thought, well, what could I show about the VCL that's uh, useful uh, in such a short space of time? So I thought I'd look at one of the features of Windows 10, and that is dark mode. Um, if you've got Windows 10, you'll know that um, certainly the more recent versions very much embrace the idea of having a dark mode. Dark mode just means that the screens are rendered um, in a dark color. And in fact, uh, even um, the Delphi and Rad Studio IDEs themselves um, support dark modes and light modes. I personally like it. I have some slight trouble with uh, floaters, you know, these things that you see in your eyes. And I actually find that the dark mode helps with that because the floaters are dark. It's a visual disturbance that you get, and uh, the dark mode then kind of cancels that out. So I actually get a lot better vision from them. But I thought, well, what we would do is probably just look at a demo of um, how to actually um, uh, detect dark mode and swap our applications to use it. Um, when we're talking about dark mode, we're talking about these kind of things. Um, where the Explorer is all dark and uh, not the usual white, bright uh, lights that we're talking about. So if I run this little program here, you'll see that it's the standard Windows 10 colors, which is kind of whitey, um, washed out color, I suppose, uh, would be the best description. Nothing wrong with that. And in fact, with the Windows themes that we've got available now for uh, VCO applications, you can have all sorts of uh, uh, interesting combinations. 
But you can also, with one single click of a little radio button like that, um, have your app suddenly swap to dark mode. Very, very useful. Now, that's all well and good. Um, you know, you can swap it and choose. You can give that choice to your users. But wouldn't it be better if when your app ran the first time, it knew that your operating system was running in dark mode? Um, now, with Windows 10, there isn't an obvious API to do that. Um, but if I click on this button here on our little VCL app, we can say that uh, dark mode, Windows dark mode is enabled. So we can actually detect that. Now, the question is, how do we detect that? Well, the answer is that um, with Windows 10, in the registry, there is uh, this particular key here, and I've got this documented uh, later on, um, which is uh, current user, Microsoft Windows, current version, themes, personalize. And under there, there's a value that you're looking for that says apps use light theme. And what we're looking for here is a one or a zero. This is a, a long uh, number here, but basically it just needs you to check for it being a one or a zero. If it's a zero, kind of counterintuitive, but if it's a zero, then dark mode is enabled. Kind of appropriate. I mean, dark, dark kind of being zero. Um, if it's a one in here, then light mode is enabled. Well, great. That's, that's perfect. But um, how do we then uh, work out how to do that in our app? Well, let's just look at my little example app that I just showed you there. Here it is in the Delphi IDE. Okay. And what I've done is... Um, in the background, I have got the um, the uh, uh, the project um, option set up so that in here, I'm not sure if this is going to show my screen because I've had a little trouble with my laptop. No, it works. Go down to here and it says appearance. This is a VCL app. I just said file, new VCL. And I've enabled some of these themes here under appearance. And I happen to have just chosen some that are appropriate. So I've chosen Windows 10. Um, for the light mode, which is the standard default uh, white mode that you saw, and you can see in the actual um, form designer over here. And I've chosen carbon, which is a default style again as well from uh, um, Embarcadero, for the dark mode. Great. Um, the source code for this app itself is actually fairly straightforward. I've got um, a button click event, and I've got a radio button so that I can check change those two um, uh, styles over automatically. Now um, you're going to look at this and say, "Well, hang on, there's a there's a simple a simple little call there." Well, this is a unit that I've created myself, um, which I've called uh, Windows Dark Mode. Um, I don't think there's any around at the moment called that, but uh, time may tell. And it's got a couple of functions in there. Dark Mode enabled is one. Set appropriate theme mode. Now, this automatically will choose a dark mode or a light mode, depending on what uh, what way your Windows is configured, whether it's running in dark mode or not. And uh, then a specific mode. So if you want to override that, as you see, there's a, a common um, um, usage pattern nowadays of people saying, um, I want to have the uh, default Windows mode, or ignore that, I want my app to run in uh, light mode. I'll give an example when that's useful. Um, Apple Maps. I have my iPhone set in dark mode. If you want your maps to come up, you don't want your maps to show in dark mode when it's daytime. Trust me, it looks weird. Um, so I tend to override that and say, no, I don't, I don't want the system settings. I think there's a little bug that might have been fixed in uh, iOS 13 now to do with that, but there you go. So there's a, another function here that allows us to override that and choose one. Um, the real magic is in this uh, function down here called dark mode is enabled. What it does is looks for that registry key that you saw um, earlier on in the registry editor, and it uh, checks to um, see if the values are there with some guards on and things like that. And if it can find it, then it will actually um, pick the appropriate theme. You have to name which of the themes you want, okay? Um, otherwise, it's not going to work. And you have to enable those themes, um, as I showed you in the project properties. But if we just go back, and um, what we'll do is just, uh, whoops, uh, after all, um, choose in the create, on create event for the form. Just going to paste that in, 
Okay. And now when the app runs, what will happen is it's going to um, call that function, we'll set appropriate theme, and it's just going to work out if dark mode is enabled by reading that register key. If it is, then it will um, choose the dark mode theme, which, as I've said before, we're using Carbon at the moment. Um, and if it's light mode and or non-dark mode, then it will choose Windows 10. Use, this can be any themes you like. They just need to be theme names. If I hit F9, um, it compiles. Um, the application will run. Du -du -du. And as you can see, because my uh, Windows is running in dark mode, then uh, my application runs in dark mode as well. Okay, so it's as simple as that. Now, the good news is um, I haven't uh, left you in the wilds. I've actually um, put this uh, this source code up on the web. And if I just uh, swap over here and um, run again, um, you can find the code for this at um, tinyurl.com forward slash Delphi dark mode. If you actually want to uh, follow me on GitHub, um, where a lot of my other um, source code is as well and things like that, then go to github.com and forward slash check digits, because that's what I'm known by. Uh, and if you want to read my blog, I'm going to do a blog post, which hopefully by the time um, we get to the uh, chat this Thursday, um, I should have filled out a blog post that tells you how to do this as well, just fills in the background. Um, just to remind you once again, my name is Ian Barker. And uh, you can find uh, how to contact me on about.me forward slash Ian Barker. Anyway, have a good week. Hope you enjoy Code Rage.